Welcome back. As the island experiences a spike in violent crime, Hot 7 TV is exploring the other victims of crime who also often get overlooked. Members of the public who either heard or saw the acts or the aftermath of violent crimes. Psychiatrist Dr. Julius Gilead says after effects could be detrimental if left untreated. The recent killing of a woman at the Grosley bus stand has led to the discussion surrounding the trauma felt by some who either witnessed the crime or the aftermath of it. One individual under the cover of anonymity said their life has been flipped upside down and the trauma felt from Saturday's shooting resulted in them seeking counseling. The shooting by the Grosley bus stop traumatized me so much that I was not able to leave home until I forced myself to on Monday morning. Um because from, I live at the top floor of the CDC, and when the police cleared the crowd, I could see her body lying down there and the blood gushing out of her neck. This is a lady whose voice wakes me up on the morning telling people, sanitize please, sanitize please. I mean, I, I heard her the morning, and then I heard the eight shots. One shot pause, three shots pause, four shots pause. Psychiatrist Dr. Julius Gilliard said this is a topic that is often unheard of and rarely gets the attention that it deserves. He said a lot of the violence seen today may be a result of insensitivity developed by individuals who have witnessed other similar scenes, even through violent television programs and pornography. Persons may not realize how traumatic those scenes are to them. Persons may not feel the effect of the trauma right away and may continue to want to be a witness to them. The difficulty with that is that those persons are being traumatized because it is a traumatic scene. They may not realize the trauma now, but what may happen is that after two or three times witnessing those gruesome scenes, they may start to be affected in other ways. They may experience um, some emotional numbing. They may experience insensitivity to, to other violent events. And they themselves might perpetrate violent acts and be insensitized to those acts. Now, on other persons of the society, it can affect them significantly. So you have persons who are already vulnerable to those kinds of stressors. And they may be more prone to things like PTSD and other stress disorders. Dr. Gilliard said the level of overexposure and insensitivity to scenes of violence and death is worrying, especially the fascination behind some of these sites. Any form of violence being perpetrated is, is, is worrisome. And even the effects on the general populace is worrisome. The difficulty we're having here is, as I always say, we don't have sufficient mental health services in St. Lucia to deal with things like that. So even the persons who recognize that they are being traumatized have little to no access to mental health services. So they have to deal with their trauma in their own way. The persons who may be traumatized and have not realized, even though they do realize or they do come to the realization some sometime in the future as well, do not have access. So what this can do is basically worsen the impact in the longer term. So short term, we may not feel anything, but in the long term, there are always effects that you may see coming out in people's behaviors, whether it is the increase of substances, of use of subst substances, or whether it is they themselves perpetrating violent acts. The killing of Hermia Lord occurred in full view of dozens of passengers queuing up at the Groselay bus stand. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. The youngest person ever has been appointed to the post of chairperson of the National Community Foundation, NCF. Anya Edwin is currently the first vice president of the National Youth Council and is the first member of the NYC to serve in that capacity. Edwin, who has worked at the St. Lucia Social Development Fund for the past four years, says the appointment will allow her to contribute to her country on an even larger scale. I get to contribute to the socioeconomic development of St. Lucians for another platform. I get to prove that young women are relevant stakeholders in the development of our country, especially taking into consideration that our future is only ours to inherit and to take care of. I also get to be another female leader in a male-dominant society who shatters glass ceilings to ensure that no child is left behind when it comes to honoring the child's right to an education. 
one of the sentimental things for me is that young girls and boys who are born into a high-risk community or environment who suffers from a myriad of social injustices can rely on my tenacity my ambition and hard-working attitude among so many other attributes as a beacon of hope for a better future and this is notably so because i too come from the inner city like them and did not allow my genesis to determine my destination the ncf's mission is to support initiatives that engender self-empowerment and social upliftment through assistance to a wide area of benefactors for emerging and community needs in education health social services among others Edwin says that the new appointment will allow her to launch a charity foundation for her community of Castries. I'm a few days new to the board of directors of the National Community Foundation and from my leadership or NGO or CSO participation in the last few years, it is not always a good practice to make plans for an organization while you are on the outside looking in and without having the, or knowing rather the where if all of the organization, its challenges, etc. Otherwise, I would just be making a lot of promises that I may not necessarily be able to fulfill. So what I will say, though, is that I look forward to shaping the social development trajectory with the rest of my team, both directors and staff of the National Community Foundation over the next two years, especially during a time when our underprivileged solutions are more prone to the ramifications of the exacerbated social disparities brought about by this pandemic. Edwin will serve as the chairperson of the Board of Directors of the National Community Foundation, NCF, for the period March 2021 to March 2023. Residents of Castries Southeast are counting their blessings to be home to more than one centenarian. On Tuesday, family, friends and the wider constituency celebrated the life of Bernadette Dedet Thompson, who turned 110. To have lived through two world wars and two pandemics is no easy feat, but Bernadette Dennett Thompson made it look easy. The woman who bore six children within her childbearing years celebrated her 110th birthday on Tuesday, surrounded by family and friends. Her granddaughter, Esther Thompson, said it has been a blessing to be part of such a milestone in her grandmother's life. She told me a lot, a lot, a lot of all things before about her life from childhood to this age. And she, and she also tell me about medicine, bush medicine, what to take, what to drink. Tough lady. She's very tough. Mm -hmm. And she worked very hard. While Bernadette was slow to speak, it was evident that she continues to be surrounded by love of her immediate family, as well as the wider community. She recounted the things she enjoyed in her youth. My grandma said, how you know? Farin, Brape, Dazin, Sig, Bakabu, Tut Money, Matkada say, Matkadu Bull, Matkabak Bull, oh, you can see him, Makabat, Matkabat Bull, Matkada say, my own. Another granddaughter shared her fondest memories with her grandmother. Growing up as a little girl, she has been the best grandmother that I've ever known. She has taught us how to love, how to forgive, how to share, take care of others, you know, and be the person that she would like us to be. She has taught us never to be selfish, appreciate orders. The proud MP Guy Joseph said that Delet is one of a number of centenarians in the Castries Southeast constituency. Clearly we have some people who are living very long in this constituency and we really thank God for his blessings on these people because it's the goodness of God alone that can keep you alive for that period of time. And um, Mother Death, as I think she is well known in the community, um, to have, for God to have allowed her to see 110 years. I was saying that means that she saw the two world wars and she's endured COVID and all of that and she's still here. And it's wonderful to have family. And when you see the way that the family is looking out for her and caring for her, we really have to thank God that she has a wonderful family 
to be there for her in these times. The woman, who is originally from Ama Mondo, now lives in Cooley Town. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. The latest weather report is coming up after the break.